Well, I don't know what I'm going to do about that girl. <laughs> well, the first thing to do is to get her into a dress. She's getting too big to be wearing man's duds. Looky here. She's done popped the buttons off of her shirt again. Well, honey, make carry yourself proud with the shoulders thrown back. It ain't her shoulders that's popping these buttons. Well, it ain't fitting. Girl running around and wild as a cougar, wrestling, fighting, and hunting. She ought to be doing woman's work. Helping me with the steel. <laughs> Better go down and stomp out the fire under that mess. Uh, hold on now, Granny. You ain't going to stomp out no fire like that, are you? Huh? Oh, of course not. Don't want to burn the shoes. <laughs> Drink much? I reckon they did. This here little fella was kicking blue blazers out of the mule. That's the trouble with Razorbacks. They such a mean drunk. Duke sets there with you. There ain't going to be room for Granny. Oh, that's all right, Paul. Granny ain't gone. Who says she ain't? She says she ain't. That's right, Uncle Jed. She's just sitting on the back porch in her rocker, and she says that's as close to California as you're going to get her. <laughs> we'll see about that. Thank if I ain't got me the muliest women folks. We ain't never going to get there. Now, what's all this nonsense about you ain't going to California? Ain't no nonsense to it. If the good Lord had a wanted me in California, he'd have put me in California. Maybe he's just getting around to it. The book says he moves in mysterious ways. Well, if he moves me, I'll go. But you and Big Jethro ain't a budging me. Granny, <laughs> this your Beverly Hills sounds like the kind of place you'd like. That butcher fella says they got smogs out there. What's a smog? Well, me and Jethro figured out that's a... Uh, Small hog. <laughs> and you heard what Pearl said. It, it ain't got no snow out there. You could run your still year round. Run it the year round here. Yeah, but walking down through the snow to the still always makes you feel so miserable. I might feel miserable walking down. But the way I feel is coming back makes up for it. <laughs> hey, 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 We've been planning and talking about this trip for days. You never said you wouldn't go. Never said I wouldn't either. But that Brewster feller has bought us a house in them Beverly Hills. He sent our $25 million to the bank out there. Well, you just chase on out after it. I'm staying right here. And I ain't afeard, neither. <laughs> Granny, I ain't leaving you here alone. And I ain't a budging out of this rocker. You ever see anybody bake a fluffier pie than that one? <laughs> Some folks don't know that cakes is fluffy and pies is juicy. <laughs> <laughs> It fell. You did that on purpose, Pearl Moldy. <laughs> My pie can't fall. It can't, huh? <laughs> Just then. Granny! <laughs> Pearl, like you, I ain't never heard you, you play the pie any any prettier than you're a plane that right. You ain't playing the piano. You bet you I ain't. Feel the same way, Jethreen. <laughs> Drysdale, if I got enough money to take everybody out to a nice eating place, 
Mr. Clampett, with your money, you can buy the finest restaurant in Beverly Hills. Before the battle's over, that's just what I might have to do. Come on, everybody. I told you to take it up to Granny's bedroom. Granny told me to take it outside. You're taking your orders from me and not from Granny. <laughs> that poor woman is old and tired, and we owe it to her to let her rest. <laughs> I just hope and pray when I get to be her age that somebody will be looking after me. <laughs> you can quit hoping and praying. And if you keep messing around my kitchen, you ain't gonna get to be my age. <laughs> Don't tell me he liked Pearl's bellerin. It wasn't bellerin, it was yodeling. Well, it curdled the milk clean out to the kitchen. Oh, I throwed shoes at Tomcats that made prettier music than Pearl. I sure wish you two women would get along together. We ain't gonna get along together till she learns to stay out of my kitchen. I bet she's in there right now, sticking her long nose into my pots and pans. My days! she is! Here, Ma, now it's a fair fight. Yes. I just want to want nobody. Well, then you tell Pearl the next time she sticks her nose in one of my pots, I'm going to cook it. <laughs> it is my bounden duty as a mother to supervise the victuals of my growing children. Don't tell me they are still grown. <laughs> the Clampett side of the family has always been big, strong, strapping folks. It's your family that brought in the runts. <laughs> Who I think she meant you, Granny. <laughs> He's about as helpful as a high wind in a prayer fire. Come on, Pearl, you and me's gonna have a talk. Jethro, you stay here and help your Granny cool down. Okay, Uncle Jay. Uh, granny, would you rather I held you under the faucet here to cool off, or took you out to the cement pond and ducked you? Try either one, and I'll bash you fatter than a gander's arch. <laughs> Uncle Jed, I can't seem to do nothing to cool Granny off. Ain't no need to, Jethro. Your pretty, young, piany playing Ma has decided not to hide herself away out in the kitchen. Well, that's a good idea, Ma, because Granny, she'd find you and whomp you. <laughs> well, you stay out here and practice playing and singing and yodeling. I'll take care of Granny. I wonder if I should have told Uncle Jed that Granny's waiting behind the door with a skillet to whomp the first person that sets foot in her kitchen. <laughs> Reckon I should have. I looky there. I hit such a perfect note, it busted the glass. It wasn't your voice that busted the glass. It was your face. <laughs> Poor man in there is so sick of his drinking wife, he is wanting to marry either one of you two. This one in is an old maid. <laughs> He's trying to save the marriage. Yes, sir, Mr. Drysdale, we'll both been fine, hard-working, good-cooking, housekeeping women is in the kitchen there. All you have to do is go in there and take a pick. Oh, this is marvelous of you. Nobody knows. Oh, no. no. And they took the pledge. <laughs> That's Why not? That's all downhill. <laughs> you pick now, Mr. Drysdale, or I let you still walk over to your house. Oh, he's going to pick me. Ain't you, sweetie, Milby? Oh, no, he ain't. He's going to take me, ain't you? He gets your banker grab and hands off in them.
taking both of them, Mr. Drysdale. No, thanks. <laughs> Lunch is ready, Granny. Oh, now, just a minute, Pearl, honey. We got a lot of mess to clean up here. Uh, Granny, darling, you give me strict orders to stay out of your kitchen. Remember? <laughs> Why, you low down. <laughs> here we go again. From a cousin of her, away, away, away down south in Dixie, away, away, away from Pearl and Dixie. Oh, I was away from Pearl, away from Pearl and old Pearl, and away from Pearl and Dixie. How can I give music lessons when every time I open my mouth to sing or yodel, 15 dogs jump on me? That's right, Uncle Dick. Last night when I come in, they had my treat on top of the pie ante. <laughs> In. Nobody said you did, Granny. <laughs> My own kin has turned against me, giving me the evil eye. You want to get shed of me because I'm old and ailing and all crippled up with the rheumatism and the lumbago. <laughs> Worn out in the service of my kin. <laughs> well, you don't have to put up with old Granny anymore. I'm going to throw myself in the cement pond and drown. <laughs> then I won't be no more trouble to you. <laughs> Don't nobody try and stop me. <laughs> Don't nobody try to stop me. <laughs> it's better this way. Then Pearl can have everything to herself. <laughs> Well, Pearl, uh, you heard her. Reckon you better take over the kitchen. All right, Jed, I'll get right out there. You keep out of my kitchen. <laughs> what you got there, Granny? Near as I can figure, it's one of them electric washing machines like we got out back. <laughs> Only this one's got a clothes drying rack on it. Well, I fancy in that other machine. That blame fancy, I can't figure out how to get the clothes in it. Let's see now. Ain't got a knob here, Mark. On. Let's turn that and see what happens. It's a lot quieter than the other one. I don't think it's working, Granny. I don't hardly see how it could. No way to put water in it. Well, it's lighting up. Look here, Andrew. <laughs> It's done got water in it. Water in it? Look at that. There's fish in there. Hell, <laughs> man. I didn't see it. <laughs> What'd you see? I ain't telling. But one thing's certain. I ain't gonna wash none of our clothes in there until that water's been changed. I am shocked, to say the least. 
shocked and disillusioned. I apologize, Mr. Pendleton. My desire to win momentarily overcame my sense of fair play. But I have a suggestion. Suppose I select at random an employee to be my teammate. Well, that seems sporting, eh, Hacker? Yeah, I'll buy that. Well, I have a new young janitor. Not a very bright kid, but nice. Jethro Bodine. <laughs> Just a minute, Drysdale. Isn't he Clampert's nephew, the one he shoots flies off the wall with? Well, Drysdale, is this true? <laughs> yes. Yes, it is true. Miss Hathaway, I believe you're on overtime. <laughs> right, Chief. Good night, gentlemen. Now, I have a suggestion for you. I'll pick an employee of yours at random to be your teammate. I consider that eminently fair. Agreed, Drysdale? <laughs> Me a broom. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I declare, city living is spoiling the whole darn family. <laughs> I choose you. <laughs> Let's see how Mr. Drysdale does with the scrub woman. Ring! Ring! We lie, we low. I told him to string me a clothesline in here. I'm gonna have to take a hickory switch to that boy again. He's gone, Granny, but you don't need a clothesline. I sure do. Can't hang him outside, it's gonna rain today. <laughs> but, Granny, you have an automatic clothes dryer that... rain today. That's right. Oh, I just read the weather forecast in the morning paper and it says fair. Yeah, it's gonna be a pretty fair rain. <laughs> Granny, the Government Weather Bureau says no rain today. Is that a fact? I hope this examination won't take too long. I got to get to school before it rains. Oh, you don't have to worry about that, Jethro. It isn't going to rain. Oh, yes, it is. Granny says so. When Granny says something's going to happen, it happens. Sounds like she has remarkable powers. Strongest little woman you ever did see. <laughs> I meant clairvoyant powers. Uh, would you say she's a medium? No, sir. I'd say she's a small. <laughs> well, now, run along, girls, but be back before three. Well, do we have to, Paul? Well, you don't want to get caught out in the rain in that dress. That's when you said it was uh, going to come down, wasn't it, Granny? It's going to start to shower at 3 o'clock. Granny, it isn't... Never mind. <laughs> Come on, really, mate. Doctor? Thank you. So, you call yourself a doctor, do you? Well, I do hold several degrees. All right, Doctor. How do you cure warts? Warts? Yeah, warts. Well, dermatology isn't my field, but I assume electrodesiccation is still the preferred method. Uh, oh, is there a newer method? Stump water. Why? Mixed with ground up crawdad tails. Dobbed on with the leg bone of a buzzard. Just before the moon comes up. Think you can remember that? Well, I'll try. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How do you cure Quincy? Quincy? Uh, tonsillitis. No, that wouldn't cure it. An inflammation of the pharyngeal area. I don't care what you call it, that wouldn't cure Quincy. Quick, what kind of potence for rising in the ear? Potence? What's that affinity for? Well, uh... How would you cure the vapors? I... What about the drowsies? Aching joints, stone bruises, corns, ender, twinges, and proud flesh. These things are outside my field. A doctor goes where he's needed. He don't just stay on his own land. <laughs> doctor my foot. 
Unless Ellie brings home a six-foot duck, you ain't never gonna run into a bigger quack. <laughs> well, I still say don't throw yourself at him, Pearl. If you want to see him, I'll conjure him over here. Yeah. My love charm. I got him all locked up. All it needs is a little starting powder and you to say the magic words. Amy, I don't hold with conjures and love charms. Pearl, with your boy in a Beverly Hills school, why do you want to stay so ignorant? I don't use this kind of stuff in Beverly Hills. That's why it's so powerful out here. They don't know how to fight it. <laughs> Open the pouch, you might. And I'll sift in a little starting powder, and then you hold it to your heart, and you say the magic words. <laughs> Granny, I don't know how to do it. I'll show you. Now you watch. Darling, darling, my true love, come a-swooping like a dove. Oh, Granny! Granny! There's somebody here to see you. Granny, I couldn't wait to see you again. Wait, Carl's a match. I conjured him for myself. Get away from me, yes, Pearl, you want, not me. Toads and buzzards, that's so mean. Switch the spell to Pearl Bodine. Get away from me. You'll stay away from me. You'll stay away from me. You'll stay away from me. So she can break the spell. What spell? The one she threw it on you by accident. I'd like to talk to her about it. You would, but just simmer down a little first. I told you that love charm would work twice as powerful on these Beverly Hills men. I can't believe it. I just can't believe it. I tried to switch it over to you, but it had too strong a hold on him. I'll have to break the spell now with my letting go powder, and then start all over for you. Now understand me, I don't blame you for the way you feel. Ain't no finer women growed in the whole world than in the hills back home. Now, you take my cousin Pearl. Powder, powder, white as snow, make the spell of love let go. Now he's broke dead, you can let him go now. Oh, Granny, uh, wait, what, what, what did you do to me? Come back, I want to talk to you. Granny, please. Granny, looks like the spell ain't broken. Never seen a man held so tight in the grip of love. <laughs> gotta remember, this fella is a psychiatrist to start with. <laughs> now stay right where you are, Doctor. I'll bring Granny in to see you just like a promise and pearl, too. Gee, how do I look? Fetching as a fat hog on market day. Let's go see how Granny do. Granny? <laughs> Doggy, you would scare away vultures. I do appreciate this, Granny. Me too. Come on. I'm glad to get shit of the rascal. Why, they must be 30, 40 years difference in our ages. <laughs> At least. I'm not about to get mixed up in one of them May and December courtships. <laughs> Here they are. Oh. Bonjour, Monsieur Doctor. You didn't let. I, I never got. I, I, you didn't let. Pearl, I never see a spell to beat this one. Come on in, yodel for him. Jed, I just can't bust out yodeling for no reason. Well, don't worry, I'll lead you into it, real natural. Well, I just hope it helps to get his mind off Granny. Me too, Pearl. I'm getting awful tired of that young fella chasing me. Why, there must be 20 years difference in our ages. <laughs> At least. <laughs> Your love charm that got him started. <laughs> but maybe it's your own charm that keeps him going. <laughs> he just bruised up. Quiet him down, boy. There's company in the parlor. Who? Dr. Twombly. So that's how come you so fancy dressed up and smelling with vanilla extract. Of course not. Well, he's right taken with you, Granny. He's been asking me a lot of questions about you. Don't be silly. Why, there's at least five or ten years difference in our age. How many? Tuck away, it's gonna start to rain. But Granny, the paper says it's scoop when I tell you. Now, 
I hear Jeff. Oh, here you are, Granny. Well, we can't go driving because it's going to start to rain. No, it isn't. No, I say it is. But I heard the news on the way over. The weather forecast is for clear skies. What time is it? A little before three. It's going to start to shower any minute. No, it isn't. No, I say it is. What makes you think so? I've been reading the signs. What signs? The way the ants is banking the dirt up in front of their holes. And the owl is hooting close to the house during the day. Fascinating. Come on. You can tell me all about it while we drive around. Oh, yeah, I ain't going driving in the rain. But, Granny, it isn't going to rain. You are the muliest goomer of a doctor I ever did see. Come on. Come on, Granny. Help me to come in. I knew this would happen if we stayed here. Leave him be, Jed. We's old enough to know what we's doing. Besides, he's got to get his car under cover before the rain hits. It isn't going to rain. Now, look. Let me show you. Look! Did you ever see such a clear blue sky, such a... It's that black thing. That's rain cloud. My doggy, Granny, you hit it right on the nose. Oh, my God! Poor fellow's gonna get soaked, but I reckon a cold shower won't hurt him none. Might even broke the love spell you threw it on him, Granny. Oh, I don't care about that no more. Things wouldn't have worked out between him and me no way. Well, what do you mean? He's too old and set in his ways. <laughs> this is the special operator. The number you have dialed does not exist. You sound like the same lady I was talking to before. Yes, I'm afraid I am. Well, then you put me through to the same butcher shop I was talking to before. <laughs> I told that fella to send me a side of pork and some pig feet for tonight's windig. And it better get here, too, before I... <laughs> Come on, honey, it's here. And I've got to say for him, it's fresh. <laughs> There you are, you little rascal. You're going home. Where are you going with that? I told me to take him back where he come from. You little... <laughs> Shucks, he don't need no invite. Just bring him along. Hey, doggy. If Mr. Ranchy Hoff is coming, then he's all coming because he's the boss. Oh, we're going to have a new one for folks next door. Say to Mr. Ranchy Hoffman, that makes four. Take your cider and a little Mountain Dew, and we'll all have ourselves a holiday. Paul says so. Mr. Drysdale's stepson. You know, the one they call uh, Sonny. Sure, fine. Never even seen him. <laughs> Way your Paul tells it. He's coming to court you and spark you. What does that mean? You don't know what uh, courting and sparking is? No. No, I guess you wouldn't at that. Well, when I get back, you and me better have a little talk. Have you ever been courted and sparked, Granny? Honey? <laughs> when I was a girl back in Tennessee, I set so many boys' hearts on fire that they took to call on that neck of the woods the Smoky Mountain. <laughs> Thank you, Ellie. Well, then, Jethro, let's talk about courting. Well, he, uh, I'm fixing to advise Jethro on courting. Yes, sir, I want to hear the advice, too. Well, uh, advice to girls is liable to be a mite different than advice to boys. Well, different how? You go ask your granny. <laughs> yes, sir. Granny? <laughs> What you doing in there? I'm listening. What for? You ain't liable to hear anything you don't already know. I realize that. I'm just checking my memory. You women folks, you have your talk someplace else. Jethro and me is fixing to talk man to man. Come on, Granny. Let's go talk outside, woman to woman. Then we'll go court. Tell him, mate, courting's for boys. Girls just sit around and wait. Jed, 
You sure got your work cut out for you. <laughs> Let's say goodbye out here. Goodbye? Well, ain't we going swimming this afternoon? Well, I, I gotta leave you for a while, Ellie. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but there's a chickadee, Laverne, who insists on seeing Mr. Drysdale. Chickadee? <laughs> what? You tell old chick I'll call him from the club. Call me nothing. You promised me cash on a barrel head to the show I did last night. You are C.D. Laverne? Just call me chickadee. That was a very interesting demonstration of depletion allowance benefits, Miss Laverne. Thank you. I do this dance where I take off everything except 27 and a half percent. By the way, I don't want to rush you, but I'm ready to work any time. It's going to be a thrill working in this beautiful mansion. You hear that, Granny? Yeah, through, I'll say this for you. You didn't pick a lazy woman. Thank you. Maybe you better get better acquainted with Granny here, because she's the one you're going to be working with. you got to be kidding. Huh? I can do anything you can do, honey. Granny's little, but she's wiry. She moves around real good. Yeah, I know, but, I mean, well, could I work with her? Well, oh, sure, if you'd rather. Well, I mean, she's uh, younger and all. She's a heap younger than you. Granny. How old are you? Granny, uh, how about you? We got no time for jokes. Jethro is a heading to the altar with the wrong woman. What? What's this? Now, Granny, Mr. Dreiser got a bank to run. Precisely why I'm interested in your problems. Now, tell me more. Well, you see, uh, Jethro is in love with this girl. Girl? <laughs> Well, Miss Chickadee does look a mite old for years. Did you say Chickadee? <laughs> yes, sir. Miss Laverne, Chickadee Laverne. Where did Jethro meet her? Down by your bank, I think. Mr. Clampett, that girl is a stripper. What's a stripper? <laughs> Someone who takes off their clothes. <laughs> What's wrong with that? But she takes them off every night. Well, I don't sleep in my clothes, neither. <laughs> Innocent Jethro has run afoul of your chickadee Laverne. Yes, I've been told. Mr. Clampett, believe me, this is not the right girl for Jethro. I told you so. Please, Mr. Clampett, let us get her away from here as quickly as possible. Well, I wouldn't want to hurt her feelings none. She's right friendly and a willing worker. Here she comes. Hold on, I reckon it's my duty to talk to her first. <laughs> Uh, Miss Chickadee, uh, about the wedding. Oh, that's going to have to wait, Uncle Sugar. I got this great new act that's going to make me the sensation of show business. Now you watch. <laughs> this is going to be a great act. The MC gives me a big intro. I walk through the curtains with this raccoon. Right away, he starts infesting my... Great act. Great act. Now, let's hurry down the bank, and I'll sign you up for the big convention next week. <laughs> hey, Uncle Jeff, where's Mr. Drysdale taking my sweetie? Never mind, Jethro. But I found her. She's mine. I cornered her and sweet doctor and all. Forget about her, Jethro. Go take yourself a swim. <laughs> Granny, I don't do that work no more. What? Uh, he means that uh, he'd like to do something where he could wear a uniform. Yeah. All right. He can wash windows with that mule tail, and he can split kindling with that fancy frog sticker. Now you're going to get it. Now he didn't mean to grab it. Let the boy go out. Please, Granny. Watch out for my dishes. <laughs> Women's work. What'd you say? I said stringing Baines is women's work. It's anybody's work, I tell them to do it. Well, well I ain't gonna do it. Jethro, that's the first time you've ever talked back to Granny. And it's the last. Now you go out and cut me a hickory switch and meet me in the woodshed. We ain't got no hickory tree. No woodshed neither. 
That's the truth, ain't it? Yeah. <laughs> hey, now, what'd you want to go and do that for? Stand up for your meals for the next few days. I want a string beans. I'll do it. It's one salted down hog jowls, one sack of salt, one sack of sugar, and one sack of dried beans. One skunk. One skunk. Is Charlie a critter about this size with a white streak down his back? Gee, yeah, Granny, you see me? He's in that cabinet over there. Now you go over there and get him out. <laughs> Come on, Charlie. He likes to crawl in dark places and snooze. See me? I never said nothing when you drug home 14 dogs, three cats, a rooster, and a duck, and a baby lion, and a brace of goats. My dingies, I ain't gonna hold still for skunks. Granny, you scaring him. What do you suppose he done to me? I've looked at many a sack of beans. But it's the first one that ever looked back at me. Granny? Jethro, finish my sweeping. I gotta go someplace. Uh, no, ma'am, Granny. What? Sweeping is women's work. You go cut me a hickory switch and you wait for me. Granny, I told you before, there ain't no hickory switches, nor woodsheds in Beverly Hills. No wonder they have to have policemen to watch the young'uns. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna bite on that one again. I'm too smart. <laughs> Is that a fact? Yes, ma'am, Granny. Uncle Jed says it's because I go to school. <laughs> oh, you're much too smart for a poor old woman that ain't had no school in her nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cool down, Granny. I reckon they just never seen how fast you can run. <laughs> Granny, you and Ellie ready to run? Dad, Dad. I'll start you as quick as I get this pistol loaded. Okay. Now, Ellie, I want you to run your best again, me. It'll be good practice for us. Well, how can we have to practice, Granny? You know we can beat these city women. Yeah, but this is gonna be a wingdinger of a race betwixt you and me. And I ain't done no top speed running lately. <laughs> Granny, you don't have to beat me to be Queen of Beverly Hills. I don't care shucks about it. No, <laughs> Ellie, your pa wants you in the race. And I gotta beat you fair and square. On your mark! Now do your best to give me. Get set! <laughs> <laughs> Who won, Jed? Well, when you passed me, appears like Ellie was out in front of you a little. That don't mean nothing. She's out in front of me, standing still. <laughs> well, you get ready to run. And don't hold back. <laughs> On your mark! Get set! Bye, Granny. Bye, Uncle Jed. It's him! Thank you. That's Lester and Earl, all right. Not yet, Jed. Let me get upstairs first. Well, what for, bro? So I can make an entrance. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to my story about a man named Jed. Poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And one day he was shooting at some food. Up through the ground come a bubbling crew. All that is Texas tea. <laughs>
like old times clanning around together. Years and years ago, they were together in vaudeville. Of course, they were pretty young at the time, and both have come a long way from those early days. Still, it's a lot of fun to get together, compare shoes, if that's it, what they're doing right now, and reminisce about the past. And speaking of those days, we asked Donald and Irene to tell us what it was like. How far do you want to go back? <laughs> Well, I can go back, I think, further than Donald. I, I know his family goes back as far as I do. But uh, I'm going to tell Donald the last time I worked with the family and Donald was, I can't remember the year, but it was the year of the earthquake in Long Beach. Oh, for heaven's sake. You know, I forgot all about that. That, that was, was in 1933. Was that it? Yeah, we were working up on the, uh, on the main street there. The Strand. That's it. We had just gone out for a supper show. That's right. Do you know what I was doing at the time? Uh, we were over at the, um, the uh, Entre Cafeteria, <laughs> and I'd just gone up for a second plate of macaroni, and the thing hit. And I remember when we came in, Donnie was saying, Oh, you should have been here. Everything was shaking. He was a little feller then. Yeah, I was 27 at the time. <laughs> no, you weren't, Don. <laughs> <laughs> that was really something. Was that the last time we worked together? That was the last time we worked. Soon after that, Donald, I think you got a pretty good break in pictures and went on to pretty big things. Well, Patsy, uh, you know right. Patsy, she was, she was first because she took over um, Shirley Temple's place. Right. And I started in 1938. Right, that's what I got. And I got my uh, break. When was the first time we worked together? Do you think you remember that? I can't when? remember that, Donald. I know the earthquake made an impression on me because you were so uh, excited about it. He, he wasn't scared. He just thought it was great that everything was shaken. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't talk for two weeks. But... <laughs> While we were talking about the past... We ask them to compare show business today as against yesterday. Well, there really isn't a comparison because there's no more vaudeville, per se. There's mostly, um, well, concert tours and um, one-nighters like Irene went on. And, of course, you have... Well, I said nightclubs, didn't I? Nightclubs and concerts, that's about it now. It's changed considerably. And it's not as relaxing as it used to be. Granny Ryan has a great TV series, but what about Donald? Well, I'm, uh, one, well I, I, I really don't know. <laughs> I made a pilot. I, never, I did a very, a very good show. And um, as, I, as Irene said, the only people that liked it were the public. <laughs> Incidentally, I bet a lot of you weren't aware of what Irene did in vaudeville. Yes, she, she I... She did a strip. <laughs> no, Donald. I did an act with my husband at that time. And it was... Uh, the type of an act like Burns and Allen, Tim and Irene, we were, you know, the, the man and woman act, we used to call it. Guppy and Fog, we used to say. <laughs> Guppy and Fog. <laughs> Despite her tremendous success in the Beverly Hillbillies, still there's the question, will the part eventually hurt Irene Ryan as the actress, or has it helped? Well, I really don't give that much thought. I think as an actress, you should be able to play any kind of a part. I almost lost this part because they thought I was too young for Granny. When I convinced them that I did play Granny when I was 18 years old. He was a cowboy, Roy. Is that right? Yeah. We were engaged to be married. Well. We had to call it off, though, because we were incompatible. Oh, that's terrible. Oh. Incompatible? Yeah. yeah. She, he was bow-legged and I was not me. <laughs> really? I guess it is a kind of a funny picture with each other. <laughs> we walked down the street together, we spelled okay. <laughs> <laughs> then there was my dear old grandmother. Oh, Dale and Roy, there's an old girl. You should have known my old grandma. She passed away at 110. 110? But the baby lived. <laughs> Him, huh? <laughs> a lot of people look at me and wonder what can that thing be? Is it fish or fowl? Trout or owl? Vegetable or human? Well, gals and guys, I'm going to put you wise. You're looking at a wall. Hanging on 
on the line. I can start your iron two dozen Levi's before you can count from one to nine. I can scoop up a great big dipper full of schmaltz from the dripping can. Throw it in the skillet, go out and skin a rabbit and be back before it melts in the pan. Cause I'm a woman. W-O-M-A-N. I'll say it again. Now I can rub and scrub Jethro's boots until they're shining like a dime. Shuck the peas, shoe the fleas, and clean the outhouse at the same time. <laughs> Get all dressed up, go out and dance till 4 a.m. and then... Lay down at five, jump up at six, and start all over again. Cause I'm a woman. W-O-M-A-N. I'll say it again. Now, if you come to me sickly, you know I'm going to make you well. And if you come to me all head stuff, you know I'm going to break the spell. And if you're hungry, you know I'm going to fill you full of grits. And if you're dry, I'll mix your corn liquor with sauerkraut juice. Ain't that a blitz? <laughs> that kind of a drink, you won't need a rocket to get to the moon. <laughs> Cause I'm a woman. W-O-M-A-N. 